Hello and welcome to today's uh, dev stream where we are going to be doing some more work on Streamline. I hope everyone is doing well today. Uh, let me know in chat uh, how you're doing. And yeah, we're going to be doing some more work on Streamline, some uh, dealing with adding some additional metadata to tracks and loading that in from files, uh, then working on some sorting stuff and then a bit more drag and drop work. And hopefully, if we can get all that done by the end of today, then we'll have the basics of playlists and tracks done. Uh, then we probably need to start looking at stuff like storing the data on disk and persisting it. And then potentially even getting onto playback before we get onto stream and getting some basics of playback working. But for now, uh, let's switch over to the main screen. And we can see Right, so, yes, what we need to do is we want to add some additional metadata for when we're dragging a track in. What I'm going to temporarily do is disable the actual copying of the file uh, because we're not actually saving to disk. Uh, if I disable that, we'll be able to re-enable it later uh, when we're actually saving stuff to disk. and then we don't have to deal with constantly copying files over. Now, when we get round to um, actually I've just realized sorting tracks by column. When we get round to actually storing this, I've been having to think as the stream has been coming on how exactly I want to store this data to disk because I'm realizing if people were to start using this as a music player they could have a lot of tracks so what I may end up doing is streams and playlists may be stored separately ah oh, Mr. B thank you very much for raiding uh, Hope you are doing well. Hope your stream was doing well. Hey, Dragon Dust, how are you doing today? How was your stream? What did you get up to? Hi, John. Welcome to the chat. Thanks for uh, <laughs> thanks for joining the stream. How is everyone today? I've literally just started and I'm uh, going through what we're hopefully going to get done today. Uh, Shepo, uh, thanks very much for the follow. It's much appreciated. So yeah, as uh, those of you who may be new, uh, may have realized I am a software developer and I primarily do Mac development uh, and I'm currently working on an app that is currently called named Streamline which is a, a sort of a music player uh, aimed for stuff like streaming and the likes uh, and we have very basics in there you can drag stuff in uh, the last thing we got done yesterday, and I said that I was going to just disable the file copying so I can show this off without errors. Uh, if I grab, I grab the track, drag it over. Ah, no. Let's drag it 
to the lowest. So you can see in here it's added all the stuff in for us, all the metadata from disk. So we need to uh, sort all that out, but the first thing we're going to be doing is adding more metadata. So, uh, let's see. Uh, Dragon Dust, you good so far? I am I? I am good. I have got a lot done today. I am... I've just got back from a walk, so I'm kind of tired and glad to be sat down in front of the computer. And yeah, it's uh, pretty good. Uh, Shepo redeemed stretch, so I'll start doing some stretches because that's always a good way to start the stream. Let's see, uh, we should, should be stream for six hours or so. It's super nice to start the week with it. Jumping now for more than two hours of meetings. Oh, good luck with those meetings it depends on what uh time your uh it depends on what like time of day it is as to whether meetings are good or bad for me thankfully meetings usually come at the end of the day when my brain's not working anyway or at the very start of the day when my brain's not working anyway so i managed to get the middle of the day without many meetings and yes, don't forget to run the plane. <laughs> oh. right, I'm going to have to, on my Apple Watch, I keep tapping the dial. And I'm probably going to have to, with my Apple Watch, flip it around so the dial is on the other side. But yeah, for random playing, that will actually be in here. And when you have a stream and you have all the scenes within it, uh, you can have, in fact, you may not have actually seen <clears throat> what I've come up with. So, I mean, this is one part of what I'm doing which is like a playback display and the reason it's this bright green is the idea you'll be able to like do this for putting into OBS or whatever streaming software and just uh, do a chroma key on the background but the key part is not actually the playback display but the scenes view where you'll be able to have different scenes and it's effectively going to be a bit like having um, a bit like a soundboard but for playlists so you'll be able to set up scenes and those scenes will have a playlist and you'll be able to set them playing but then you'll be able to customize what happens so you'll set the playlist you'll be able to say should this playlist shuffle or should it not you'll be able to say when the playlist ends should it just stop the music should it repeat the playlist or should it automatically go to another scene and one of the things you can do is say automatically go to the previous scene so if you are have like a main scene and you want to temporarily go to another scene and once that's finished it can go back to the previous one and then for transitions you can say okay i'm on the town playlist and i want to go to battle you could have it immediately skip you could have it crossfade uh between them or you could have it wait for whatever the current song is playing to finish before it actually does it. So it is effectively like replacing whatever's currently in the queue with the new thing. So it's all about building this up so that you can actually swap between. And obviously I want things like shortcut support, stream deck support, so you can do all this. But it's just an idea I've had to make playing music on the Mac, especially for streaming. I, uh, I mean, this example here where you've got intro, town, battle, outro, this is an example that someone in chat like, pointed out to me is, what if you run this with like a D&D game or some other tabletop RPG game? You could have this on there. You could have it, maybe you're at a party and you want different uh, scenes for different moods. Maybe you're running some sort of live theatre production or something and it's just like, you're not, you, you're not a high-end organization you want something fairly simple that you can have on the mac and you can switch between them so this is the sort of thing that i'm really building and it, it's sort of also turning into a let's try and build also a somewhat lean uh, uh music player for the mac for people who don't use streaming services but who just have mp3s and stuff that they download a bit like me so basically, build the older iTunes in a sense, but it's going to be a lot simpler. 
uh, at least to begin with. But yeah, so I'm building this up and yeah, you'll be able to have the playback display where you'll be able to fully customize it. So the idea is, is this playback display, you'll be able to add labels, which can have special tokens in them. You'll be able to add images. You'll be able to add like a playback bar. And essentially like the system that will do this, that allow you to do whatever custom playback screen you want, will also be the system that I used to build this up here uh, to, uh, so that like, I'm using the exact system to provide the main playback view for the app. And yeah, so this is what I'm basically going around playing with. I'm doing quite a bit of sort of old school Mac design. So you'll notice uh, I'm going very much on the, uh, the bevels and shadows and so on for all of the design of things. So going very much wanting some to add 3D back to the Mac. But yeah, so this is Streamline and it's what I'm slowly building up. Uh, it's becoming more and more ambitious over time as I am basically like getting more feedback and getting along with it. And it's, um, yeah, it's hopefully going to become my second app. But uh, going from that, we currently have this for playlists and streams and tracks. And yeah, so what we want to do is get it so that we're getting all the metadata in and then you can start like clicking on these to sort, uh, manually reorder playlists, a toggle columns. So what you want I, uh, the, the typo there, Dragon Dust, managed to um, <laughs> flag auto mod. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so this is what I'm working through. And like I say, I want to get the metadata in, get it so that you can start rearranging and drag and drop things, toggle columns on and off, because there's going to be quite a lot of columns potentially, and just get this whole track thing sorted out for now uh like get all the basics because like i say you can drag stuff in to the sidebar drag files in but it won't actually uh you can't drag them onto there it doesn't correctly update this so there's a lot of stuff we need to get done today but if i can get this done then we're good then we can look at storing stuff to disk and then potentially either streams or playback so yeah this should be quite a uh fun project i want to get it to the point where i can use this on my own stream even if it's like fairly like unpolished then i will um probably start switching back to working on copies and doing some stuff on my own stream because i'm wanting to actually build all that up because that's the other thing i've got open in photoshop which is what i was discussing on stream uh yesterday which is like the stage layout for when I'm converting everything over to like a 3D environment for my little robot to roam around in a stream. So that is the next project I'm going to be working on. And yeah, I'm very busy with all these streams. So it's uh, good to have them to keep me honest. So yeah, and I will be looking for beta testers at some point, most likely alpha testers early on. So it will be good to have uh, streamers who can uh, like take it and just play around with it, see what they think uh, fairly early on. Because like I say, when I get it to the point when I can use it on my stream, I'll probably give it to a few people to play around with, uh, see what they think of it, uh, just get feedback. And uh, yeah, I mean, one key thing I do want to add, uh, and it depends on how difficult it is and so on, would be to have it where you can, rather than outputting to your regular audio output it will output to a virtual microphone because anyone who does streaming you all know that if you want to get music into something like OBS or something like that you basically need an audio input going in like the music you're hearing now 
is coming in through a virtual mic and it's I'm needing effectively like two apps in between the music app and OBS to funnel the music towards it. And it would be a lot easier if Streamline had a virtual mic and in whatever streaming software you had, you just added an audio input and the input was the virtual mic from the app. So it's things like that that I'm uh, thinking of uh, seeing what I can do because I've never I've never done anything like that before so it'd be fun to see okay can I pull this off what do I need to do that how do you do all the audio stuff because I've all the playback I could do fairly easily because that's not too difficult AV foundation stuff but when you're getting onto virtual mics that's when it gets more complex so yeah uh Right, <clears throat> so the next thing we want to do is metadata. Actually, no. Next thing we want to do is for me to... Good job that showed up on a different screen because for some reason I had a client project <laughs> open in Tower. Okay. Uh, so let's commit this in fact I will just in our track file manager we enable this while I commit Right, now I can disable that again. So, things that we want to have. So, date added, last played, so that sort of stuff that we want to add. Uh, what we could probably do with adding is file size, uh, which is going to be a, uh, why is it doing a double? Uh, I think it's a uint64 we want for that. Uh, file type. Hmm. I'll UTI a string. Because if we have the UTI, we can get the actual type name and stuff. Uh, play count. You? So this is all making sure everything is hooked up for under redo, though for a lot of these you don't really need it, but it also marks it potentially for our persistence purposes. Uh, right, what I need to check... Get all that like, track number... So stuff like your sort metadata you don't pull in from there. We can add all that as Yeah, we'll leave that now. Rating we can leave because they're going to be in. Uh might as well add album artist. Add that up to that. Uh, no, we'll add it down here. So I don't remember that we need to add it to persistence. String. Okay. 
got that, got, got all those. Right, so let's add these to the persistent. What we're going to do is switch over here and add these up here. Okay, state is. Now, a lot of these are things that we could get from the uh, from the file again, but we want to store them in a database for so that we're not having to like load every file in to get all the metadata every time we launch. So in this case, it, I mean when. Uh, you all came in I was thinking about how exactly I'm going to store this on disk because at the moment it would be set up to all go into a single JSON file and what I'm thinking is having a JSON file for all the tracks metadata a JSON file for all the stream stuff and a JSON file for the playlist just so they're all nice and separate on disk because I get the feeling that at some point the tracks I may need to convert from JSON to uh, maybe a, a SQLite database or something like that. I mean, it all depends on how much people use it. Uh, like the reading is not going to be an issue. It's the writing that's going to be potentially an issue. Because when you play a song, you update the play count. And if you update the play count, well, then you need to write to disk. And if you need to write to disk, then are you going to need to write the entire JSON file out atomically? So we'll see. I'm currently using my own backend system, but it doesn't actually technically handle persistence. That is a completely separate thing, so we can do that separately. And thanks to how it all handles observations and notifications and stuff, we could have it hooked up where it directly that stuff using a SQLite database. So we have all those in. Now we need to. Uh, Stick these in. Uh, so what we will do is we'll have plist, and uh, now let's do it this way. We will column select. The hold for those who have never done this, hold down option, and you can click, drag, and column select. Then what we're going to do? Make sure we have enough empty lines paste in and you'll see that we have a bunch of cursors now I can for example do option left option right to move all those cursors there so then I can start typing plist plist keys dot and then we get that there Go value that equals uh, let's do control I to uh, make sure that we uh, indent and this is going to be self dot and then we paste it in so make sure the date added is the date added that's played file size all UTI play count album artist and then for update Want let well, want to paste in again. And the reason we do it like this is we want to make sure that we get everything, and any failures that need to happen do happen before we actually update the values, because this is not create from plist. This is update from plist. So you can create it and then restore if you need to. So we'll do let that equals, and then we'll just throw in a type as a placeholder equals try. After attribute with key dot 
that key from Playlist. Multiple cursors are wonderful. That is going to be a date. A date optional. Uh, you went for uh, a string. And we can go down here again. And we are good. And this is just making sure they're in there. This won't actually be used for anything that we're doing today because this is only needed for the persistence side of things. So. Where are we? Now, let's actually populate some of this metadata. So data did, that's already set there. So we want the file size, file UTI, play counts okay being zero, so album artist. Go in here, of the album artist, feed metadata that I choose, metadata, Album artist. Need to do the same thing for ID three tags. Ah, keyed metadata. Uh, metadata album. Okay. Hmm. Wivelin. Maybe there isn't. Oh man. No. Album sort order, title sort order. Original album title. Yeah, I guess we don't have one for album artist. Hey, Sinsta, it is going fairly well. Uh, just slowly building up. Uh, the metadata for tracks and streamline. Uh, maybe asset. So you get the duration. Is there any chance that it will give me the file size? Okay, we are going to have to. Uh, I believe it's URL that we want to look at. Is URL of course. So there's no way to get what are the attributes in URL? Because ten euro. You know what? This is why header files are useful because they turn into something useful. All right, so that it isn't an attribute. Um, property. That one. Oh. Resource values. Uh, okay. That's bookmarks, but 
It should be. There we are, resource values are key. So what I want to do up here is get my resource values. So let resource value resource values are keys. Uh, to be dot, um, file size key. Because if you can't get it, can't get it. Uh, so, at least for now, we'll do it like that. Uh, self dot file size equal resource values file size key uh, as okay. And there's an NS number. Work. We will see. And then self dot file UK equals content type key. This is type. Now what? Let's do what you always need to do when Apple's documentation is being Apple's documentation. Oh. Oh. Out loud. have it there so that we can uh, get it. What are you failing on now? That has no initializers. What am I forgetting? Okay. So if I drag this onto here, So resource values, file size. Well, that is just an int, so we will switch that over to being an int. And resource values, uh, content type. File size equals resource values dot file size are zero and self dot uh, file okay, equals uh, type or um, 
is uh, UTI for no, date. Well, you got data. Right, so we have all of that done. So that should hopefully all that data in for us. Here we just Oh, this one. I uh, want to change that to in. And this needs to be a plain in. Okay, let's see how this goes. not showing that stuff in there. Let's show that in the UI. Base. Uh, data added. Case. Uh, File size case, file type case, play count and case album artist. Okay. Yeah. Hundred times. Here, I want to add some more uh, columns. And this is one of the biggest things that is missing from the UI kit is proper support for multi column tables. So we want no one, two, three, four, five. Added. Uh, file size. Right, so now let's build and run.
pack some packs in. So, file size. We have in. Type. We have in. Album artist is filled in. Have genre. So why are we not playing under it? Build and build and see what the genre ID actually is. useful as a chocolate teapot. Um, so the genre ID is 21. Um, Identify iTunes. Don't write it. If you mess it, iTunes. Why do we have multiple ones? Okay, uh. Let's do a Google. Get action from that ID. It seems there is stuff here. 
that uh okay. okay. That isn't really all that helpful. Um, because I mean, you've got a genre code but our genre code is 21 now uh, it should be rock Kit API would have it. Okay, so that is not a um Hey It's always fun when you can't find iTunes iTunes like Ah, here we go. Okay. 
So these are all of our genres. that later. Uh, where are we? Uh, later. Oh, so we'll sort out the genres later. Uh, for now, I think we have our additional metadata coming in. So the next thing is going to be sorting our tracks. And I'm feeling rather tired, so I'm just going to quickly run and grab another cup of tea, because I evidently need more caffeine. And when we get back, uh, we will get all of our tracks sorting, which is, personally, not that difficult to do. But yeah, be back in a few minutes. Okay, I am back with a nice, fresh cup of tea. Uh, thank you for the folly. Uh, yeah, the follow, silly only. Hope you're doing well today. 
Uh, let's switch back over to the main view. So I actually spent last night doing some spring cleaning on my Mac. Uh, realizing that I'm going to have a new Mac soon. This is probably going to be the last stream I do on my iMac. Uh, but I'm going for a fresh install, so I'm going to be copying stuff over manually. And I have a one terabyte SSD in this iMac, and I had 20 gigabytes free on it. So I decided to go through and try and work out, okay, what can I clean out? And the first thing I did is went through mail and realized I've got all this email that I've collected over, over like the past decade. Do I need most of it? And the answer is no. So I ended up deleting about 66,000 emails from various folders. Uh, most of them were either like spam or mailing lists that I never properly followed or stuff like that. But that freed up a few gigabytes. I then realized uh, where an awful lot of my disk space had been going, which was the fact that I had not properly emptied my downloads folder since 2020. Now, when you're a software developer, you generally want to clear out, especially for Apple's platforms, you want to clear out your downloads folder fairly regularly because you're prone to... Let me just shut Oh, there's someone using a leaf blower outside. Uh, you want to make sure that you clean out your download folder fairly regularly because you are prone to downloading Xcode versions and to having multiple Xcode versions. And I had, I believe, three or four different Xcode versions in my download folder. So, empty my download folder and a bunch of other things that I didn't want. I managed to go from about 18 gigabytes free to I think I'm close to 143 now. So I'm rapidly cutting stuff down and I know there's other stuff that I'll be able to avoid transferring. Uh, I've got a bunch of uh, VMware uh, virtual machines uh, that is about 100 gigs that I won't need to transfer over. Uh, and various other bits and pieces that I can just leave on. So I'm probably going to have loads and loads of space on this new machine, but it was just kind of shocking just how much cruft I've collected and how much I don't actually need. Uh, the one worrying thing is that the VODs for this stream have just about reached 100 gigs so far and my plan was oh i will store them on an external ssd a one terabyte one well that's probably not going to last particularly long but i have a plan so the plan is eventually to turn my imac into a bit of a nas it's already going to be a uh, somewhat of a server for running like Xcode server on various virtual machines of different Mac OS versions and so on. But I'm also going to turn it sort of into a NAS. I bought an external enclosure uh, to put all my SSDs in. But the thing is, all my SSDs are 2.5 inch. This enclosure is three point, like fits 3.5 inch hard disk in, so it's quite big. So what I'm probably going to do in future when I start running out of space is buy a new enclosure uh, that is just for 2.5 inch. So something small to sit on my desk and hook up as my additional storage and backup and so on. And then probably buy some like spinning hard disks to stick over on my iMac and make it into, uh, like I say, a NAS effectively. And that can be where I store all these big stream files and so on, so that they're not having to uh, clutter things up because they're mostly there for archive stuff. So that will hopefully be where uh, where I go. But I've uh, 
I should be able to get away for a while longer. I mean, it's ta taken 100 gigs in four months. So it'll probably be like a year or two before I start running out on the one terabyte SSD. So we'll, s we'll see how things go there. Yeah, I'm uh, not going to be streaming on Wednesday, partly because I have other stuff to do and partly because I'll probably still be setting up computers and making sure everything works. So I'll probably, the next stream after this will probably be on Thursday, um, which will be sort of a test stream, seeing how things work and playing around with my first proper Apple Silicon Mac. Right. So we want to do sorting. So at the moment we've got our view model here, which is turning track. Oh yes, the, the Mac Studio is definitely exciting. I'm uh, really eager to see what it can do uh, with what I throw at it. I mean, it should be way faster than what I have now. And what I have now is not a slow machine. So it should massively improve what I have. And at the moment, the current status of it is it has left somewhere in Germany and should hopefully be with me tomorrow. So, yeah, I will be probably spending much of tomorrow evening transferring stuff over and doing my first cleaning clean install in like 16 years. Because I want to try and get my Notes app working again because ever since I had a failed macOS update, Notes will not sync on my Mac, and I have no idea why. I've tried absolutely everything, deleting all the data locally, logging out of iCloud and back in multiple times. Nothing seems to work. So I'm hoping a fresh install works, because Notes works fine syncing between my iPhone and iPad, so... Right, so what we want to do here with our view model... is hmm. can you sort a swift array using sort descriptors probably not we we'll need a way to convert that that should be too difficult Right, so we're going to take our sort descriptors in. We're going to have tracks, but we're also going to have sorted tracks.
You're going to have tracks there. Started tracks. Both going to be. Actually, two. Just have tracks. Right, so we are going to Now, the first thing we want to do is check the tracks collection. So self dot model controller dot tracks collection dot add observer So if the chain not change type it insert now what we want This is kind of tricky because we want to reload whenever track changes but if you're in the playlist we only want to reload uh, the tracks in the playlist but the tracks in the playlist can change let's as always just do the simple case so if you add remove or change a track we are going to uh, self dot need reload equals true. I'm going to copy paste that. If the subscript has changed, self dot reload equals true. And also, by uh, if let plus equals playlist. Hopefully we'll be able to get rid of that soon because they should have, I believe Swift 5.5, you should be able to just do if let playlist. Uh, what version of Xcode am I on? 13.3. What version of Swift is that? I don't think on Swift family we can test see if that actually compiles. Oh, that's an error type. Uh, 
Uh, I'm going to filter my playlist so the playlist gets updated. Then we should reload as well, which I believe should happen if a relationship changes that would affect playlist. Should fire off for the inverse. But we will see. And when this is the case, we get the tracks. And tracks are going to be oh dot playlist dot tracks dot compact map track r self dot model controller dot tracks collection dot all and then with the tracks we want tracks dot Sorted by Back one oh, if card sort self dot sort descriptors count greater than zero else of the tracks tracks otherwise we return now in this case or sort descriptor in I've got sort descriptors So, let's open up our playground and see how sort descriptor works in Swift. So, uh, class, foo, and a subject. Welcome. Right. And let that descriptor equals
I'm going to have to quit hex card. Are you gonna run? Bad instruction. I need to make that an up. Okay, so some sort of C, that's fine. First to do. Path. Okay, and does that work if they are not? Let's see. Um... Right, what if got the columns here? What if the columns been here?
theme where to easily do this. So what we are probably going to have to do is create our own set of sort descriptor. Um so if we create a struct which is a uh sort descriptor and you can have a key path See, this is a problem with the type system. Is that like, with an any key path? Right, let's say I did math equal to dot name. I did Bob key path key path that should return Bob. But what if I type that as any key path? Oh, it does work. <coughs> okay. We've got that key path and um, whether it's ascending or descending uh, so these are going to be type x view model sort descriptor and we're going to funk compare uh, track one Let's return it and ask. Uh, problem is, is the sorting. If you look at sorted, you have to save the in increasing order, but if they're equal, then we want to be able to fall back to the next. Set of
Oh, is it? Where the is it? <sighs> Do this. See, this is the problem with Swift on the type system is. That's just so much boilerplate code for something that is so simple. I'm actually tempted just to make all the properties at Objective C, just so we can use a regular NSO descriptor. Because that would solve it, because NSO descriptor is incredibly powerful. Sorting things in Swift is easier than Objective C if you know what you are sorting. Like if I just wanted to sort them by title, that's easy. But what if you want to say the user can choose what you sort by and they can have multiple things that they can sort by and you have a lot of options for them to sort by. Then it becomes a lot more difficult. And you almost want having key path. And the ascending, the sort script would have to be a function. Like, like you'd basically have to do it where you would have var compare is track track. Which uh, sort descriptor dot compare track one track two case dot all the same would be continue case dot Sending would return true. Okay, start. Sending would return false. And then we break here because the continue should get us to the next sort descriptor. So if you order the sending and the descending, then we break. If they're ordered the same, then we want to look at the next sort descriptor to compare them. Hey Snowtwig, welcome to the stream and thanks for raiding. Uh, it seems everyone's raiding today. How are you doing? How was your stream? That's good to hear. Uh, what were you up to on your stream? And it's going... Uh, it was going okay and then... Um, I've now hit... Why has that vanished? Uh, and then I've hit some roadblocks that I'm slowly 
making my way through. So that they're all the same all the way, then we'll just say true. Oh, we'll never be executed. Well, that's fair, point, because it will return true, return false, or continue. Oh, some character rigging. That's cool. I, I'm hopefully going to learn how to do some of that. Uh, in the near future. I just have so much on this week that all my uh, 3D learning is on. So, uh, I mean, if you want to share anything that you were working on, we can uh, show it on stream, I'd be happy to. Always happy to see what other people are working on and all the uh, excellent stuff they're building. All right, so we've got columns up here and what we are going to do is we're going to hack things a bit, where the keys we're going to use for the sort descriptors are going to equal columns, and then we're going to create a column for the sort descriptor key, which will then create our thing. So what we're going to do is var uh, sort descriptor, uh, Our track new model dot sort descript. No, it's not going to be an array, it's just going to be these. And we're going to switch on self. Actually, may be able to. Is this. that in case not that I'm gonna return Swift. Oh, that looks cool. That is a lot of rigging. That <laughs> looks pretty complex. Oh, 
I'll have to make sure to watch your VOD and see uh, what actually, uh, like how you've gone about all that. A night in the woods, Swift. That looks really cool. That is a lot more rigging than I want to be doing on my first character. This is why I went for a lamp. It's like, oh, you only need like, what, one, two, three hinge joints. Yeah, that's looking really good. Can't wait to see what it looks like once you've got it uh, fully rigged and uh, textured and animated or whatever you're doing with it. It looks like it's coming along really well. Really cool seeing what people are building, uh, especially from watching like Dog Swift stream and all the things that are coming out of it. Uh, like, I mean, this entire stream is largely uh, inspired by Dog Swift. Having my little uh, robot was me trying to design an animata. Um, actually doing the stream was from watching Doig working on uh, his stream overlay and coding on stream and seeing uh, how cool that was being able to work on this stuff so it's uh, largely down to them why I'm doing this now Yeah, there's a, there's a lot of stuff watching how Doig does stuff on the stream. It's just interesting seeing what is possible. And the fact that he works on the stream, on the stream, uh, is what makes it like even more interesting to me. Because like, I'm a programmer. I've been doing this for a long time. I know how to sort of build those sorts of things from the point of coding. Like in terms of coding, I could probably do better than Doig, but you don't get to where Doig and Swift are just by coding. You need to know what you're doing with that code, have the vision of what you're wanting to create, and to create the 3D as well, and all the colouring, and he's just great at taking an idea and quickly coming up with something. Uh, taking inspiration from elsewhere so Doig's a pretty good at 3D uh, I mean as we've been seeing the past uh, few days where Doig shines the most is obviously colour like his colours are like mind-blowingly good Now I have decided I am going to steal uh, something from uh, Gwillim's stream, which is I am also going to uh, probably make a little plush Doig and Swift to hide somewhere in my own uh, stream. Make it sort of a, uh, a running theme of if you start making like a 3D, like building a 3D environment and having an animata in there and stuff like that somewhere, You've got to hide uh, a dog and a swift. <laughs> the unwritten rule of the virtual <laughs> 3D streamers. All right, let's see if this come. Oh no. Uh. Okay, I want to do self.compare 
and it should be dollar zero dot that dollar one dot this thing. Ooh. have this return nil and for tags we want to allow sorted by tags now but yeah yeah it'd be a, a cool easter egg just to throw in there which just a cool little modeling challenge to see uh like all different people modeling dog and swift and uh putting them in uh oh I'm going to go grab some lunch well hope you hope you uh enjoy your lunch snow twig and uh should be here when you get back uh, if you want to uh, continue following along with me swearing at my computer or uh, wanting to but not actually swearing because I'm on stream. One of the advantages of uh, an iMac over many other types of computers is they're a lot heavier to throw out a window. Makes it far less likely that it's actually going to go flying. Right, so we have all that there. So what I want to do is sort descriptors did change. I'm going to do self dot view model dot sort descriptors equal table view dot sort descriptors. So map that to I want to compact map uh, which is going to be column with row value uh, L0 dot uh, key path dot sort descriptor. So it's going to create a column with the key path which should be the same as the identifier. Now I'm going to create the sort descriptor which is basically going to create our compare function. Pass it in there, set it on there and we should be good. So let's see what happens here. Oh, MacBook Air has narrowly avoided being thrown on many occasions of rage. Yep, well a MacBook Air is a lot easier to throw. Like I said, an iMac is a lot harder, whereas a Mac Studio is going to be a lot easier to throw. I'm actually curious, what is the weight difference? Because the Max, the M1 Ultra Mac Studio is meant to be relatively heavy, like it's meant to be a pretty dense object. Uh, Apple.com Mac Studio tech specs. So, about roughly about eight pounds. So, what is the weight? Seven inch iMac. How much lighter? Uh, right. So, twenty pounds versus. Eight pounds, so about half as heavy. It's 
Well, it's pretty much like two pounds or one kilogram, like the Ultra is two pounds or one kilogram heavier than the Max. So. And it will also, the other thing that would be nice is that even with headphones on and having the music playing, I can still hear the fans on my iMac going because the fans are currently going at 2700 RPM because when you have OBS running and you have Xcode compiling and all stuff like that, the fans go. So the most uh, interesting thing we'll be seeing whether the fans actually start up on the uh, Mac Studio because I've heard a lot of people complain about them uh, how some people can really hear them but <laughs> it'll be a lot quieter than what I have now the thing that's so ridiculous to me is the fact that the fans run at idle even if you tax it for hours and hours and hours and the temperature is only getting up to about like 60 degrees it's like can you not like increase the clock speeds a bit apple and um like use some of that thermal headroom that you've got Especially as all the uh, information about the new AMD chips has been coming out, where they showed off uh, one of them. I think the single core was boosting to like 5.5 gigahertz, which is pretty impressive clock speeds. Uh, they're looking at like 5 gigahertz plus all core boost. Which, considering like AMD stuff only usually gets up to like mid 4 gigahertz all core boost, the new AMD chips are looking pretty handy. So it'd be interesting to see how Apple competes with the uh, M2 there. Right. Oh, is it key? That's what we want. But yeah, it's it's nice seeing competition again. After so much stagnation, you have uh, AMD competing with Intel and Apple coming in and competing and Intel being behind there, and then on the GPU front, you've got AMD, uh, Intel should be coming in soon. I would say Apple, but Apple is not really competing on the GPU front at the moment. They may like to think they are, but they've got a lot of work to properly compete on the GPU front. When they genuinely do release something that uh, matches a... Uh, 3090, then it's going to be more interesting. Okay, track two, we need a funk reload data. And after the tracks reloaded, I'm going to sell a view. Load data. And on here. load data he's going to do self.table view load data okay this actually be oh no because I'm not storing the observers but uh, have it far Oops, let me collection 
section. Curious. Oh, of course, I'm not using combined, so they don't get cold. Uh, force and reload. There we go. In fact, rather than doing it this way, let's do it programmatically. In here, do our table column and self dot table view dot table columns. Dot script prototype equals and a sort descriptor with key table column dot identifier dot row value uh, true. Hi Buffer, how are you doing today? Sort descriptor sending pool.
Oh, I want to hold that, that, and then e Ascending is going to be well done. Ascending. Build failed. Why? So now when we go in here, we're now sorting there. If I drag these on, they appear. Battle, start gate, duration, artist, album, year, file size. Right, so the next thing you want to do is make sure that our table Column. I've had a. That's it. We well, want multiple selection on it. Uh, column. Yeah, we don't want column selection, but we want multiple column. How do you do it in music? I want to sort by plays, but then sort plays by album. I should be able to sort by artist, but then sort artist by title. So you can select multiple columns. So why you have to enable column select? Eight. Oh.
You got that is reordering, resizing. Got all the style. Actually, do it because I thought it was like shift click, or command click. Uh, what multiple table column Mac OS? Oh, sort by. Stop supporting multiple. Like the, the API is still there. So, how do you select? fresh glass of water. When we get back, I'll... It should be possible to select multiple columns in the table. And not select them, but sort by them. It used to be possible to do that in music, but it doesn't seem to be anymore. Can't work out how, so I'm going to do some more searching when I get back. But at least the basic searching is now working, so... I'll see you all in a few minutes.
Okay, I am back and ready to find out what on earth is going on here. Right, and that's table view. Column. <clears throat> so. Let's go to our data source. Have a look down here. <coughs> oh, our old descriptors should be empty, which they are. And uh, table view dot sort descriptors have one. If I click there. That doesn't. Man doesn't. Options. Control. Ah, is it control? There it is. So, I wonder if that works in music. If I search by plays, and you can see here, uh, if I don't. Uh, no, control does. That. That's sorted by there, but we can see that we want this. Command. I will print out table view dot dot descriptor and that does what we have here. I will select that. So I will be back in a sec, sorry.
Sorry about that. And someone phoning up uh, wanting money from me. So, where were we? We're getting here. Why is it adding all of these? It shouldn't be. It should be adding all of these. It should place it. Structure objects. Every column is considered sortable if it has a subscript to the found subscription. Yeah. How table views should have worked. It's not how table views have worked in the past. What are the old sort of script? Oh, ascending, descending. Am I going to have to manage these manually? Ah. 
I'm not. I took some wires. Nothing there. This makes zero sense to me. Because this should just only have one item if you're just clicking on the columns. And then if you. Uh, I believe it was shift click. Would have. Uh, added more, so I do have to do it manually. Okay. Sort descriptor equal double column dot sort descriptor. Oh, if let table column dot sort descriptor prototype. As we want test
Uh, I... Yeah, I'm probably going to have to ask about this on... a uh, nap kit slack I am on. Uh, where did I put my iPhone? Is it? Multiplying multi column sorting by the user clicking on the that column. Then shift clicking adds. On the server, you spot this at the park, but you can see that. Uh, what do you see in that? Uh, it seems that. Okay. 
see if I get any response to that. Hey folks, I've got a bit of weirdness with NS Table View sorting. I'm trying to implement multi column sorting where the user clicking on the column header sorts by just that column. Then modifier clicking adds another column as a secondary sort. I thought NS Table View supported this out of the box, but it seems that simply clicking a table column adds it to the sort descriptors, i.e., the number of sort descriptors never goes down. Am I misremembering how sorting tables works, or am I missing some configuration to get this working? Hoping it's a second because I'm pretty sure this should just work as you expect. If you just click on a column, then you get new sort descriptors, but it completely replaces them. And it only adds additional sort descriptors if you like shift click or command click or whatever the modifier was for it. So I used to use this like fairly frequently in uh, iTunes, and it used to it should just be something that NS Table View supports because it supports selecting multiple columns it supports having multiple sort descriptors so and the thing is the sort descriptors if you set sort descriptors on the table that doesn't really do anything uh like it will mark which columns are sorted which is why it's super weird that it's just constantly adding to them uh But yeah. Maybe because doing the here, like there is anything on there sort descriptor that have basic sorting working. That's good enough for now. What I will do is, yeah, is we'll do dot descriptors dot uh, God let dot descriptor uh, Table first I'll turn and then soft model sort descriptors equals Sending. I want to make sure that we get the column, otherwise, self dot view model dot sort description. That and table. That. Why? That I'm going to model. Table view dot. Uh, View a description. That may cause a loop, I'm hoping not.
Okay, hold that. It is implanted. Uh, so next up, uh, let's save that. So next up we have manually sorting playlist. So this is going to be quite a bit more interesting because we're only going to allow this when you're sorting by a particular column, which is going to be the uh, the track order and maybe multiple selection is something that we need to do um, looks more precisely because you're not going to be able to do column order plus something else sorry yawning uh, let's see are we correctly showing here and correctly sorting yes so we're going to want another column and this column, it, like I said, is going to be the track order. Now, the key thing here, if I show you, so if I sort by the track order, you see it goes one, two, three, four, all the way up. If I sort by this, it still says one, two, three, four, all the way up. The track order means sort by whatever order I do. But if I go there, then you can't be arranged the same way. So you can only rearrange when this is selected, but you'll see here that it's still the same number. So actually implementing this is going to be fairly easy because we only care about the sort index and then we can go and get the sort index. So we don't need something special be able to display this. This is literally just what number row. So we're going to add a column which is going to be the index. And in case index then off top view model. Uh, no, then then row uh, dot uh, uh, what would it be? A row plus one. Add it in. Uh, inning. Actually, have a visible title. build and run. That's exhausted. Is not next. Now, because we're going to have to tweak this a bit. So one, two, three, four, one, three. So the way we're going to need to tweak this a bit is that this is going to be a 
special uh, type of sort script. Um, I think what we need to do, sort the script we're going to change into an enum. On the enum, you're going to have an option for the sort index or for uh, a track compare. Now the first item in the sort descriptor is a track com is a uh, sort uh, index then we're going to take our playlist get the tracks so we need to actually sort that before Oh. 
party. Ah. I. So first of all, let uh, value. Now we can do it. Uh, so we're going to tracks sorted by this. We're going to get the descriptor. Guard case dot. So we're basically going to ignore the sort. That is going to be of dot sort back in dot screen.
Okay, I don't think this is compile. of a man. Now, there we go, Bill succeeded. Okay, so what I am going to do is stream a model controller. I'm going to change this around. So it should be track 1, track 3, track 2 in the sort index. So we go here, track 1, 2, 3, track 3, 2, 1, track 1, 3, 2, track 2, 3, 1. So we are sorting by the sort index here. When we are sorting by this, we should allow ourselves change. 
must be better ways of um, handling this because this is getting way too complex in code and we just want a case of give me the things sorted by the sort index if it's a playlist or if not give me the thing part of me is thinking that we may end up being better with two very similar but different tracks view model you'd have a tracks view model which would do all the stuff for tracks but then you'd have one that additionally does one for um, playlists that add stuff like the sort index uh, because we don't want that in tracks so either adds rearranging then we need to take that into account here. Part of me is wondering whether I should create uh, the columns programmatically. So I have an enum that defines them and then it will create them, it will have the whips, um,
Then we'll continue. Okay. And let's go searching for reference for um, uh, the future stream. So, at Pure out first to see if I want to pay. Okay. That's quite possibly the weirdest download uh, system I have seen today. But I mean if it works then it works then. So let's give this a try. Uh,
Chat, do you can you think of any of her like sort of spaceships that are sort of like a very clean aesthetic? Uh That's definitely uh, an old game. Let's throw that in there. Ooh. That's certainly uh, interesting. That has a bit of more of a, uh, a Star Wars aesthetic to like the interior. That's a, an actual <laughs> uh, bridge on the ship. Makes a good reference.
comes off in a bit. Oh yeah. Uh, start again. Yeah, I think we have a decent selection there. Top colours and styles for some of the spaceships and the bridge. Sort of thing that we could go for. That could work well. because I'm getting some people responding to my question. So... So, 
I think what will make this easier is if I yeah, if I define the columns in here have it create the columns and it comes now my brain is completely shot now I think we've had just too many struggles that my brain is not going to engage so, I have also been up since about half six this morning, my brain did dad to wake me up early and would not let me get back to sleep. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to end the stream here. As we started early, so we'll finish early, we have liked to got a lot further but this is just a bit too much of a mess and I just need to ponder about it it's one of those things of tomorrow I'll probably realize how to do it but it's always the case when you are programming that if you especially when you get towards the end of the day if you get stuck and you like trying to force your way through a problem it is always always far better to just Say, no I'm not going to do this I'll try and do something else and yeah I'm going to do something else and then just mess about uh, go and ha like finish early or whatever because odds are you'll wake up in the morning you'll have a shower, you'll sit down at your computer and you'll solve it in 5 minutes it's always the case that Good night's sleep, a shower, a walk, or whatever. Not sitting in front of your computer, not doing the code, is what will actually make things work and help you figure it out. And uh, it's why you can tell who the uh, the experienced programmers are, because the experienced programmers know when to step away. The inexperienced programmers are the ones that are like, no, I'm going to program 24-7. Uh, I'm just going to stay up and I'm going to down some Red Bull and I'm going to code all day and all night. And like, That is how you burn yourself out. The more experience you get, the more you realize in terms of good quality code and problem solving, you're probably only getting the get between four and six hours a day. The rest of that, like... You can still write code, but the amount of time it takes to write the good code goes down and the likelihood of you writing bad code increases massively. So it's good to realize when you get to that point, just stop, finish for the day, go and do something else. Because, I mean, I don't know about others, but my brain works in a particular order and certain things fall off during the day first thing to fall off is my ability to write uh something like an article or a blog post or something like that. anything where i'm having to write english that is the first thing to fall off so i can do it in the evening but it's not going to be as good as earlier in the day it's more of a struggle code is the next thing that falls off and then the last thing is technically something that doesn't fall off, which is my ability to do anything graphical. Like if I was designing, I could still go through. Like I could potentially go through and do some Blender work now. But the problem is the sort of stuff I want to do on Blender is learning uh, how to rig uh, the open for that. I need to watch some YouTube videos. But I could do that well into the evening because that part of my brain just constantly works. And it's just, I think, I don't know it's different for different people, but it's just different parts of the brain sort of tire a lot easier. 
And I do wonder if part of it is like for programming, you've got to visualize a lot of stuff in your head, but it's not necessarily visualized in the same way here. But if I'm doing graphics work, what I visualize in my head almost immediately goes out onto the screen. And therefore, I don't need to visualize that anymore. The computer's doing the heavy lifting. But, yep. So, we're going to call it there for the day. So, I want to thank you all for coming by. Uh, thank you to Monsieur B and to Snowtwig for the raids. And, yeah. As I say, I won't be streaming on Wednesday evening because I've got something on. And I'll probably still be setting up my computer. But, hopefully, Thursday we'll be streaming and i'll see if between now and then i can get the rigging done because we may do more of this or depending on where my brain is at may try doing some animation in blender and maybe even starting a bit of work on designing uh the spaceship at least the interior of the spaceship uh for my stream so as always, thank you all for watching. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your Monday and a wonderful week until we meet again. And happy coding.